want to bring into our conversation now Maurizio Claver Caron, executive director of Cuba Democracy Advocates. He's also editor of Capitol Hill Cubans, and he is opposed to the president's trip. Maurizio, good to have you with me. And your site reran this Thank Wall you. Street Journal op-ed saying that the president must use this opportunity to call out the racist Marxist dictatorship in Cuba. So even if he doesn't go that far, is there a way to use this trip to pressure the Castro regime into accelerating change for the Cuban people? Well, the bare minimum for President Obama on his trip would be the standard set by President Carter in 2002, obviously as a former president, when he actually spoke on live television to all Cubans, and he recognized the Varela Project at the time, and Oswaldo Baya, the courageous democracy leader who actually gathered over 25,000 signatures asking for fundamental freedoms in Cuba. I note that Oswaldo Baya was then murdered uh, a couple of years ago under uh, the regime of General Raul Castro. Uh, so I think the great misunderstanding here, though, is that somehow Raul Castro is a closet reformer or some kind of closet Democrat that's going to come out. And the fact of the matter is, this is a person with extraordinary amount of blood on his hands. Not only tens of thousands of executions in the early 60s, but infamous purgings in the 80s and 90s, and the murder of very prominent pro-democracy leaders just in the last few years, like Oswald Dobaya that was brought up in President Carter's speech. Uh, so I disagree, and I think, frankly, you know, a lot of this reminds me of what was uh, thought of uh, Bashar al-Assad, uh, 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 five or six years ago that he was somehow a reformer uh, but that's just the facts just simply don't support that so we know uh, Ted Cruz is a Cuban American uh, his father is from Cuba and escaped and this is what Ted Cruz had to say yesterday about how dissidents are treated take a listen he's not gonna meet the dissidents who are being tortured right now by Raul and Fidel Castro who are being silenced for daring to stand up he's not gonna meet the ladies in white and so when President Obama is there with Hollywood celebrities and rock musicians drinking at the, at the embassy, the political prisoners who are languishing are left behind by this president. So, Mauricio, we know that the president is scheduled to meet with dissidents. It is symbolic, certainly. Uh, but what would you suggest that the president does to give that meeting more heft going forward? Well, first of all, we're going to have to see because a lot of the, the dissidents scheduled for that meeting have been missing this morning. Uh, yesterday, uh, there was over 60 dissidents arrested. On Saturday, over 250. So in the last couple of days, over 300 dissidents alone uh, um, have been arrested. Some of them are missing this morning. So we're going to have to see. And we know that a lot of them have been threatened. Their families have been threatened just to not attend that meeting with President Obama now, tomorrow. Now, are these the dissidents so that's that would a, march after mass? Concern that we saw with Chris yes, Jansen talking about the dissonance that, that were taken after March after mass protests. That's right. That's right. And this morning, others, including Antonio Rodriguez, a famous uh, Cuban punk rocker, uh, Gorky Aguila, uh, he, he's been missing this morning, Ailer Gonzalez. Others that are missing. People don't know where their whereabouts are. And that's of great concern. So we're going to see how this turns out tomorrow. But I add, look, the big concern here is the president has been saying, and his advisors have been saying now for weeks, that the point of this trip is to make the president's policy reversible by cutting business deals uh, with the regime. One of the things that we're seeing is this Starwood Hotel deal. This is a deal that's being done directly with the Cuban military, with Raul Castro's son-in-law, General Luis Alberto Rodriguez Lopez Callejas. If we would have done that in the 1980s, say President Reagan would have been cutting deals with General Pinochet's son-in-law of uh, business deals, you know, President Obama would have been on a college campus protesting that. And yet somehow we're giving this news today like this is okay. We're entrenching, doing cutting business deals with regimes that violate every single international labor convention and fundamental human rights standards. And that should not be accepted, particularly in, in a hemisphere where 34 out of 35 nations are democratic. That should be a concern for all of us Americans. Mauricio Claver Caron. Um